It's a beautiful weekend morning, and Shadow and I are gonna go do some rock hounding. And where are we gonna go? I have no idea, but I know we're going to the mountains. And on this trip, I'm gonna show you how to find good areas to rock hound. You don't need a book, you just need to know how to read the signs. So let's get going. Up you go. Where we are going is going to be high in the mountains, and this time of year, there's a lot of predators out there. Coyotes, bobcats, mountain lions. In the winter, I have an attire for Shadow that is even more protective than what I put on him in the summer, because it's just too hot in the summer for him to wear it all. Hop over here, Shadow. Let's show him. You, the, I made this myself. This is a Kevlar vest. It actually will uh, prevent teeth from being able to penetrate, and then these are all spikes. So I've got him as protect, about as protected as I can possibly get him, as well as a tracker that goes at eight miles so I don't lose him. This is a good example right there. Look to the left. You can see volcanic rock and the mountains. You can see they're made of granite, igneous rock. And then to the right, we see sandstone. We don't want to go right. We want to go left. Left is where we'll find quartz and uh, other uh, rocks made of silica. That's where we want to go. Into the mountains, away from the sandstone. Uh, Shadow insists on riding on my lap, which is normally not a problem, except when he's covered with spikes. <laughs> So let me give you an idea of what we're looking for and where we're at. You see the mountains up there, and what we're standing on is the alluvial fan. That's all the rocks and soil that is washed down off the mountains and formed what they call an alluvial fan. And it goes all the way down to the valley. Now, there was a sign pointing up and it said, welcome spring. Well, that's good. That means water, geothermal activity. I see volcanic rock, that's good. And I see granites and other forms of igneous rock instead of sandstone. So those are all signs. And just looking down below me, you can see that this little rock here was formed. There's veins in it, and there's quartz within, whatever the host is. But I mean, that, that's your, those are the signs. And I see this all over. would like to find more of the, you know, beautiful agates and jaspers and stuff. But this is all telling me that the type of elements and minerals that we would hope to find are very prevalent and present in these mountains. I mean, I've just stopped the truck for a minute and all of these rocks have quartz in them. So we're definitely on the right side of the mountains, away from the sandstone, and there's some beautiful stuff in here. It's a really sunny day, too. This stuff actually polishes up very nicely. A riverbed is always a great place, too, because it's washing down gravel from above and often it's done some of the polishing for you. Well, we're clearly getting close to water and there's been a lot of animals. I see a lot of tr deer tracks, a lot of deer tracks. Shadow plays an important role when I'm out here in these remote areas alone, rock hounding and exploring, and that he's my eyes and ears. 
I keep him safe from coyotes and fox and although he chases foxes actually but nonetheless and uh, Bobcats he's he's pretty well protected but none of those predators are a concern to me what I worry about are mountain lions and they're quiet so with shadow around I know one can't sneak up on me and uh, he'd let me know and I have protection to keep us both safe if we were to encounter one I hope we don't well we're continuing to just walk up this wash uh, for no particular reason other than it's beautiful and that's how you find things sun's really bright today I lived in Japan for several years and the Japanese have these little sayings they're called kotowaza they're little sayings that have often profound meaning one of them that I learned that I think is particularly applicable to rock hounding the wandering dog finds the bone think on that one I'm finding a lot of green. I think it's copper. I'm gonna find out. So, washes and stream beds and so forth are another great way to find interesting rock because they dig down for you and reveal all these layers of different kinds of rocks that have come down from the mountains above and it's very really interesting what you can find in these cutouts sometimes if nothing else they're just cool another example basalt quartz vein let's see where is shadow Garmin, he's 76 feet ahead. Oh, there, I guess I just saw his tail. More of this green mixed in with quartz. It just got me curious. I'm going to figure out what it is. This is a really good example of basalt, which is volcanic rock that has not made it to the surface of the earth. So it's igneous, internal, and you can see how it made its way through this granite. So volcanic rock making its way through the granite. If it reached the surface of the earth, then it would become extrusive basalt or volcanic rock that we typically, you know, call volcanic rock that we see on the surface. There's a lot of quartz crystals in this granite. But yeah, it's just really cool to see how the Earth's crust is formed. Um, we're gonna drive a little further and see what else we can find down a little ways. Uh, we've had a lot of fun so far. Can't say we found anything that I really wanted. There's a lot of quartz, but um, not agates and jaspers that I'm looking for. Uh, so we're gonna um, keep driving, but you know that's the thing about rock hounding. The wandering dog finds the bone, and if nothing else, we have a lot of fun. <music> Okay, so we've driven to the other side of that mountain range. So where we were before at the spring and walking up that wash was on the other side of that mountain range right there. And I like what I'm seeing here a whole lot better. I'm seeing a lot of signs of geothermal activities, different colors and like sulfurs. And you can just see, you know, there's a lot more 
minerals and coloring and this tells me I'm getting closer to where we might find some colorful jaspers. I found this which is a microcrystalline banded that would be an agate. It's translucent. There's deer up there. Get home, buddy. Take a look at this beautiful sunset. This is spectacular. This is absolutely incredible. I don't know if the camera is capturing the beauty that I've seen with the naked eye. I hope it is. That's so beautiful. It's getting a little dark. Uh, this is a good spot though. I need to come back. I need to come back when I have more light. Well, Shadow and I had a great time. We saw some beautiful country, and I hope the uh, footage uh, that I took with my GoPro uh, caught the magnitude of the splendor. I mean, it's just beautiful country. And we brought home some pretty interesting rocks. And although I was looking for jasper and agates, I did find an agate, uh, but I found the right conditions, and it was getting dark. I'm very sure when I go back to that last location, uh, we'll be able to find some uh, jaspers and, and more agates. So this is what we found there though. This is an agate. It is chalcedony, banded, and translucent. Let me show you what I mean by translucent. This is a little bit of a strong flashlight actually. It might be a little too strong, but you can see it's translucent. So. Those are the three conditions. It's, uh, it's silica, banded, translucent, that's an agate. Here is an agate that I found in this area after it's been polished. They polish up beautifully, very similar. So I'm gonna throw this in the polisher, it'll come out looking like this. We also found some run-of-the-mill quartz you know, nothing special about, about these quartz pieces, but they do, another one, they do polish up very beautifully. Here's some examples of some that I've polished, and they too can be translucent and have some really beautiful structure within that can show through. I don't know if this is going to show through very well for you or not, but I hope it does. So they're fun to polish. 
I don't, uh, they're, they're nothing special really, but they polish up real nice. They make a beautiful polished stone. This is another piece of chalcedony, or you could say agate again, banded. I found this up above Gunlock, also translucent. Then you'll recall, I was trying to figure out what is this green stuff that I'm finding. Well, I believe it's magnesium. And the reason I believe it's magnesium is because it's magnetic. I, it's not magnetic. It's attracted to a magnet. This is a rare earth magnet. So that one I bumped, so it's wiggling a little bit. This one is suspended. This is how I tell if they are attracted to a magnet. You need to suspend them either with a string or a rubber band or something, because it's not extreme magnetic uh, magnetism, but You'll see how I can move that. See, that responds to my magnet. And it's a positive response to the magnet. Magnesium tends to be green and responds to a magnet. This one does too, and it's got that in it as well. Certain sides of it are more, there we go. See how that response to a magnet. This one, this one actually is the most responsive. I can get it just to stop moving. Hold still, I'm making it worse. Well, I'll show you. Here we will see, I can see I can really get that thing going with a magnet. And this one is the least but it too responds to a magnet. So, a little experiment. It was these uh, greenish rocks that have a lot of green infused in them. I'm pretty certain that's magnesium. They respond to a magnet. Uh, they're not magnetite, I would not say but uh, they have uh, magnetic properties. Now, I'd like to tell you about a lodestone. A lodestone is a true magnet. These are responding to a magnet, but they're not magnets. A lodestone is a true magnet. That is how we first learned to navigate using the North uh, Pole. Uh, by using a lodestone that would orient towards the north uh, in, in response to the Earth's magnetic field. I have found a lodestone. They're very rare. Uh, they are magnetite that has been charged. So what would charge a stone on the ground? There's only one thing that can charge a stone and make it a magnet, and that is a lightning bolt. Now this is a lodestone. It has a band of chalcedony on top. This is magnetite that was laying on the ground that was struck by a bolt of lightning, and it was magnetized. The difference between this and these stones these are attracted to a magnet. This is a magnet. That's a little paper clip. See, this is a magnet. Now, it's not as powerful as a rare earth magnet, but man, if I put the two together, that's a powerful <laughs> bond as opposed to these where I can move them around with the magnet, but not to that extent, right? So these are rare, and I found one. Uh, they're out there. The other interesting uh, rock we found out there, and there was quite a bit of it, is pyrite. 
otherwise known as fool's gold. I'm hoping you can see that glistening. Uh, I hope it shows. Can you see the sparkling fool's gold in there? Oops. Nothing real special about this is prevalent, but anyway, I'm going to go back. I bet you I will find jaspers and agates. But on this trip, we saw some beautiful countryside. We learned a little bit about the mineral content of the mountains. We found some, uh, some quartz that we can polish up. We found some chalcedony agate that we can polish up. And we had a lot of fun. Thanks for coming along with us.